So we are here for the fifth talk of the second lockdown series of talks for OSM Ireland and the building project. This time we have Rory McCann to give us an advanced set of, of lessons on how to map buildings. Take away Rory. Okay, yep. Yeah, um, hello and welcome. And um, yeah, as, as Tad said, just um, throw any questions in the chat. Uh, so... Um, had asked me to to focus on um, aerial imagery offsets uh, and mapping of terraces and curved buildings, um, which I will give a little uh, rundown to. Um, you know, some some of this I've covered in other things, so um, you know, like like many things, hopefully uh, somebody will learn something, and but there might be a lot of um, of, of uh, overlap now. Um, so offsets, uh, let's start with that. Um, aerial imagery, uh, you know, it's not always correct and it can be off by a little bit. And of course, one issue is when, um, you know, if you have several aerial imageries uh, for the same area, it's good to use many of them. Or at least, you know, we, we're lucky that we have several sources of imagery available. So, um, you know, you might for certain areas or certain things need certain one thing or the other thing. Uh, but if they are, if the images are offset, then, um, then from each other, uh, and from reality, then uh, it can get bad. And also, if they're just offset from um, reality, uh, you know, then you'll be mapping wrong things if you're mapping off that. So, uh, offsets are an issue. Um, usually, things are mostly pretty good. Uh, OpenStreetMap does not sort of have, you know, <laughs> sub meter accuracy. Like, if, if you want to use OSM for, you know, something that's like centimeter level, that's, this is not the project for you because that's, that's often not how people map. Um, the best, so the way, uh, uh, just quickly, I'll share my screen. Mm -hmm. do, do, do. See if this works. Oh. oh, I'm clicking the thing and it's not working. Share screen. Oh, hang on. Yeah. Uh, hello. Okie doke. And you should see things. And let me, I can see in the imagery so can you just see that squiggly line i think i can see that so you'll be able to see it so we'll just turn that okay yeah we're seeing that yeah turn that off and now it's blocked <laughs> okay so i know how not to do that all right um let me do that again so uh when you have an imagery um you can Oops, i've lost it um, here we have, let's download the OSM data, yep, ah, uh, now, this is all actually pretty good, um, the, what you can do is if you have this, uh, no, um, up here at the top right, uh, you, well, at least I have that, or you can, you can right click, here we have the, uh, oops, um, here we have the imagery, uh, Thing. Uh, uh, the imagery layers menu and if you right click on it uh, you can uh, there's an option here for the new offset and if you click that you can type in the offset and um, you know xx I, I don't know if that's what units that is or whatever um, you know to the left or to the right um, and you could manually type that in or you can also just click and drag uh, with the mouse um, and of course now don't do silly things like this um, this, uh, and so if you uh, know, like, if you know something's wrong, you, you can line it up. Like, like for example, um, there's, you know, a, a, a um, power transmitter here. So in, in theory, you could, uh, you could uh, right click and, um, and, and adjust that if you wanted to get it exactly right. Um, the reason I chose this point is because this is the source of the river mine. Main, which is over here in Germany, and this is the Weiss mine, and this is the Rotor mine, the red and the white mine, and they come together here and they flow off this way eventually into the Rhine um, via Frankfurt and such. Uh, the reason that's interesting is because there is one of these beside it. It's it's basically the the local state government put a little pedestal um, saying, you know, this point here is exactly uh, this uh, at this latitude and longitude, and they have a little. Um, they have a little sign explaining that and they, they do say you can put your GPS device on it and uh, 
and and see that it's correct. If you put it in this little point, um, and this is actually mapped in OpenStreetMap uh, here. Do you this? Uh, do you do you a reference punk to come back? Um, and there is one imagery, do, do, do. <laughs> uh, which is so it's actually here. So that's that's this little um. The, the 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 river bit is here, and then this is uh, this is where it is. Um, and you'll notice in Jawson when you start it up, it does tell you that it might be aligned and will warn you. Um, but this uh, seems to be pretty good because, as far as I remember, uh, the uh, this actually physically was here. Um, and if you notice, you can see the the paths and such are are, are going along with that. Uh, and somebody has joined with their microphone on. Oh, yeah. Um. So that is how you can get the best option for how to align imagery. Um, it is possible to do this in ID as well. Uh, if we go here, um, I'll open with ID, and the way you um, the way you align imagery in ID is the, as you'll notice. This also is, is in the right place. Um, uh, it's background settings, and you can see the, the imagery and it's selected the, this one, which is pretty good, uh, which is the default. Um, and down here is the imagery offset, and uh, you can type in raw figures, or you can click and drag on this gray thing and uh, move things around as appropriate. Um, so that is how you do that. Uh, with, um, there is a service and a plugin called the Imagery Offset Database, and it is a, a, a global database of, um, um, imagery offsets. Uh, it's got a website here from this must be Ilya. Um, and uh, so we can see all the versions. Um, and and you can save. I don't really use this too much, but apparently, um, you can save a uh, a offset for like an area and uh, a, or within a certain distance, and uh, and then other users will be able to benefit from it. So the goal here is, is it's kind of like crowdsourced area imagery. Uh, um, Improvements, uh, but uh, I, I haven't really used that that much. But apparently, you can change it by. Um, um, so here I have on on my thing. This this is for just uh, changing the offset again, like like that option, um, and this will download the. So it's actually an imagery, imagery offset. Uh, no, uh, uh, get imagery offset, um, and that will that will download uh, for this area, and there isn't any, which obviously implies it's quite good, or no one's using it. I don't know how many people use the Imagery Offset, uh, imagery offset database, um, and then apparently when you've aligned it, you can you can store it. Um, actually, look at hmm. okay, store calibration geometry. Ooh, he described it. Okay, yeah, I don't know. Um, so I'm not really sure how to do that. <laughs> um, but but I think I think you can if you just select another thing. Uh, don't select it. Top mode thing, these are no offset. Okay, so no, we don't do that. But I think this has a little offset, so let's uh, get this one and uh, let's put try to store that. And you would you would do uh, just a, a description. Stuff like that. Um, so that is one way to use the to uh, locally store. I mean, that's kind of the basics about it and um, offsets. Um, you know, I I. I often just personally try to kind of be consistent with with the most of the map and 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 see what's what's pretty sensible. I've heard a good rule of thumb is that the Bing imagery is often quite well aligned, and however things like the Esri Clarity imagery are um, better quality. Uh, so you could you could fire up the Bing and, uh, and then maybe align it a little bit. I don't know. Um, okay, so uh, that that's kind of like um, kind of some of the basics. But um, the other thing. Ooh, new questions. Um, yeah, so again, if there's any questions, just fire them in the chat and I will occasionally stop and look at that. Um, the other thing uh, I wanted to cover was curved buildings. Uh, so, i.e., well, curved buildings. Um, again, I'm, I'm using Jasmine for this. Um, yeah, I mean, if we're talking about advanced things, uh, it's quite, uh, quite um, important, you know. Uh, if you want to, how to to well map a curved building. Now the the obvious way is uh, to here we go. Here's one I found earlier. It, yeah, here we go. Here's a building with curves. Um, now if I download, uh, we have basically this building anyway. So although it's actually not as bad as good as it could be. Huh. 
Uh, is that two buildings? What do you reckon? Uh, can you go through there? That's probably the same building. Anyway, we'll ignore that for now. Let's, uh, let's just, I'll show you how to do this from scratch. Um, so I've created a new dead layer with nothing on it. Um, now the simple way is, I mean, you could just, just kind of click everything at, oops. Okay, except, don't click right. Um, and you could map the building. But that's uh, a bit rough and um, a bit long, so what's a better way? Um, there is, in Jossum has the ever useful util plugins too. I don't know what it's called too. Um, if you don't have this, you need to get this. Uh, Utils plugin, here it is. Um, install this JOSM extension, it is fantastic. So it has a way to make a curve. So what you can do is uh, you start drawing a point and you draw three points along the curve. Let's go here, two, one corner here, and then you press Shift C. And as you see, it has made a little curve um, along. It, it has made my last three points into a curve. Um, and then we get a curve. Um, it's quite useful this building actually is curved in a, a circular sense. Uh, if you had something more oval-like, uh, it wouldn't work. Um, it, this is a multi-story building. I am mapping the roof first. I know that and I will adjust it later. Um, so that is how you map. Uh, that, that's how you can do curves. Um, when you are doing um, the JOSM um, mapping, um, if you press A again, uh, you will see down here at the bottom right um, is uh, this goes green and that means that it will you see the yellow yellow lines um, it, it is uh, showing the yellow line is snapping to a 90 degree angle um, unless you you know this is probably like I mean that's 60 90 70 whatever uh, so it, it's very easy to, to do exactly 90 degrees and I think it's based on the left yeah, it must be based on the last segment you do. Um, so this is a good way then if you want to manually draw without using the building tools plugin, you can um, you can uh, you can get nice ninety degree angles for weirdly shaped buildings like this. Now, some of this uh, I can see here. This obviously hasn't worked out, so it must have been off or something. And this is a shift, control shift to a uh, oops, rotate. Um, yeah, that looks right. Um, so th this isn't really curved buildings, uh, but it's 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 kind of when you have a curved building, you probably have to go more advanced than just simple uh, squares. Um, so the the align mode, I think it's called. It's it's where usually in JOSM you press S to go into select mode and A to go into add mode, and then A again. You'll notice it turns green uh, to toggle this uh, snapping mode. Um, so this this is probably not a ninety degree angle. So uh, we'll just put this in manually and uh, let's go off a little bit. Uh, yeah, and uh, turn that off. I'm going to put another curve in here. Okay. Control C. Ooh, you see, that's not really very curvy. Um, but anyway, and we'll go back to uh, snapping mode. And this has taken this line as my my. What the hell line has it selected actually? Hmm. Oh, 60 degrees, 90 degrees. Yes. So this has taken a uh, this this last segment here as my snapping. Um, so this is 90 degrees. You don't want that. Off. We'll go here. This is probably a ninety degree angle, so uh, let's go with this. This um, snapping mode plugin, uh, by default, it, it it works on um, on I think the last last mode, uh, the last one. But if I want to do say ninety degrees or perpendicular from this line, what I do um, because this would normally be um, ninety degrees, for example, from this last segment, um, and then I get a code ninety from here. Be you see, but I really want to go along here, but I want it to, to be aligned with this. So if I hover my mouse over this this segment here between these two points and I press control, you'll notice that turns yellowy. And that means that this line is being used as my, um, so it's 90 degrees, I'll take minus 90 or whatever. Yeah, you, can, you can see this, um, <laughs> I'm, I'm literally putting my finger up against the screen to be like, you see this, but you can't see my finger on the screen. Um, or can you? <laughs> um, uh, so so um, it, it tells you that, that it's 90 degrees. Uh, so I just want to go along to here um, and, and, and press that. Um, and it will continue uh, doing that um, uh, against that. So I've now done a line here that is that is at right angles from, from this. So this is at right angles from this. Um, we'll turn that off and we will do this looks like another curve. So we'll do a point in the middle and an end point and that's and I press control C and my last three points get curvified. That's good. And this I will just put this in regularly. I'll turn back on 
snapping and it snaps to this so I get my nice right angle. Now what is what is interesting with the snapping is this this, this you can see there's a yellow line uh, going down. You can probably see it easier against the black here. But you will notice you, you can't it's easier if I show you here. Um, if I go along here, if I go to here, you will notice there is a yellow line going to the left of my cursor to this point. Uh, and that, so that means it is aligned. There, there's a, a 90 degree angle from my cursor point to where I am to this, this point at the other end of this yellow line. So this allows you to, to really line things up. So if I was to click here, I would then bunk, get well, more or less. Okay, I'm off a little bit, but I am off a little bit. Um, let's try that again. Uh, boop. Yep. Okay, and boop. I'm on it, and so I I could I could easily connect it up. Um, this is happening on this on this side. You, you probably you can't see it because it's a white background, but we'll just click that, and then we can connect boop, up exactly, and then we get a nice roundy building. I'm not too happy with this this bit here. This this bit. Um, what I'm going to try to do. And select this. Let's uh, extrude this point along. So if I press X and I hold Control, you know I should really turn on, turn this because um, this yoke. Yeah. Is my uh, pop up thing. Um, if I if I hold, let's see, let's select this. And if I uh, hold Control. And drag a point, it will. Oops, no. Extrude mode, press control, and then you can drag a point uh, along the line that it is on. And you can see there's a yellow thing like the extrude. So I can I can drag this along the point there. Ah, whatever. Okay. Um, so I've, I've tied that a little bit. Now we got to move this into the base of the building, which I mean, I'm, I'm just, yep. I'll show this again. Uh, so I, I, I'm just looking at whoops along here. That seems to line up there and there. Uh, obviously, the since we can see the this side of the building here, uh, it's it's um, that's where the uh, the, the, air, the airplane was was facing that. So we'll just click and drag after you're done, and that would be um, that would be how you would map curved buildings and uh, um, and curves in buildings, and then also some tips on better. And um, better building of um, of more complicated uh, buildings like that. Um, but as you all know, um, building most buildings are, are just squares. But if you ever need to uh, to get more advanced, you can do that. Um, yeah. Any questions? Nope. So um, now the other the other one then is uh, more kind of. So Rory, I did have one question I typed into the ah. chat room. If there are new, sorry, oh yeah, I looked and didn't look. Um, if there is a new house, uh, new house on Esri and other house on Bing, how would you align them? Well, so, or, um, what you would, I mean, an offset uh, is relatively uh, good. Um, and like an offset is, is like you know it doesn't differ you know ten meters down the road is different so so if you have uh, if you have something um, uh, okay uh, oh yeah there actually is questions this is great okay so um, okay first one uh, Tads um, if there's new housing entry and the housing big how do you align them you would you would use it you, you would align the one imagery to the other and then well not sorry you wouldn't align one you you would you would align say the Esri imagery with with whatever the correct way to do it is and um as in uh you know like if if you align the um the bing imagery correctly um then and then you want to get the Ezra imagery you could align that against against another part of the image you are looking at you, you know i mean if you if you're looking at at this it's his new houses here oh, it's probably not great. i don't know whatever it is at the country if if somebody has built houses here you know in this field you know, you can look at you can look at this bit over here on the left and and align it off that, and then you know that that the imagery from here to here, the offset should be fine. So um, that, that I mean, that's how you do that. Um, that kind of answers your question. Um, Lars, can you add extra nodes to existing lines? Add and remove uh, add, add and remove them. So yeah, so this is kind of um, 
One easy way to remove them is um, the JOSM has the improve way accuracy feature, which you get me press W. Um, and I think mode P for this one. Let's see. Yes, here I am. Improve way accuracy. It is a lie. Yeah. Um, and when I do that, the way that you have selected, uh, you can improve the accuracy of that way. And um, you can you can move nodes around. So when I have my mouse cursor, you'll see this dotted. If I'm, it it will draw. So it selects the nearest node. So let let's say uh, let's say this corner here and this bottom corner here. You'll notice um it is red because it is selected and there is dotted dashed uh, red lines to the left and to the right of my cursor going to its nearby nodes and this basically allows me to alter this node's position based on um, just clicking. Um, and it, it selects the nearest node, um, but if, like, let's say I want to get this node and bring it over here. If I if I move my mouse over here, it, it will do that. So I press shift and I can, I can, it will always use this node no matter where I go. I can do silly things like this. Um, when you hold, anyway, when you hold alt in this mode, it will delete the nearest node. So you can see I can remove nodes this way. So that is an easy way to remove nodes from a way um, without adjusting the other ways or accidentally you know, things. That's a quick and easy way to do that. So do, 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 control Z. Okay. Um, and then you can add a node by pressing uh, control. And you will notice there is a, um, it is not selecting the nearest node, but the nearest like segment. And I can then add, find, you know, fine tune details if I, if I want to you know, add this in. And then I can adjust this. Um, so if you want to add or remove uh, extra nodes to existing lines, uh, the improved way accuracy is really the bee's knees. Um, and you should look into that. And there is another way to remove nodes is to simplify a way, which is shift K. Um, you can adjust. Be careful with that because it's a simple shift Y. Okay, select away and we'll go shift Y and you see it's removed some of the little nodes. The the uh, tolerance for that is um you know the, the kind of the simplification algorithm they uses is um that it removes nodes that are more than I can configure in the settings. Um in some of the advanced preferences and if we go simplify max max error so I have it at, at 0 0.2 meters so to, anything that is a twenty centimeter <laughs> difference um would get removed okay, because this is a very tolerant thing. Uh, this is very 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 strict. Um so you know you you could make it very big and be quite silly. I, I often would use this feature if you know if you go to um uh Africa and you look at a hot mapicon where someone has mapped uh, footpaths, there's a lot of cases where they've just it's like a dot and a node every you know every meter almost and um you don't need that in OSM, so um, you can go in and do that, and that, that essentially will just remove extra noded ways. That is another way to remove nodes from a way. Um, remove unnecessary nodes, so, so that's uh, useful. Uh, you ask about polylines, but in OSM they're all ways, so uh, that's that's kind of the same. Um, there, there's no difference there. Um, the big C, Karen asks about, um, is there a tool that allows the building, yes, default change to building was anything else. Yes, there is. That is part of the uh, preferences. If you go to building tool, oops, the heck is it? Build, buildings tools, Germans. Um, the buildings tools dot tags uh, setting. Now I have changed this to nothing. Uh, if I was to reset that, you will notice it goes to building equals yes. Um, so if I just set that, like if I now go, Draw a building uh, that has got the building was yes tag, and um, but uh, if you edit it, you get a list, and uh, you can you can change that to anything else if you want to go building as a house, and you can put them anything. You can be like source equals um, um you know um. Yes, it was no. Uh, and so, so you put in you put in uh, two things, and and you get. Uh, oops. 
Oh, I've selected things. So that, as you see, I've got buildings. Yes, source equals may. Yes equals no, because I don't do that the first idea there. But that is how you would change the default. But um, let's delete. Oops. Delete, delete, delete. A good thing for that, if you're actually in the countryside, would be to have building equals house and house equals detached. And then when you do all of those um, um, standalone houses, um, it'll be much faster than having to read to go back in and tag them all. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, this is where also the find um, and uh, Jasmine's find thing can be quite useful there. I usually just have the building thing goes off because I I, I was working on um, doing it back down and remapping a lot of things. So um, I wanted to merge geometry. Um, there is also, I gave a talk and there's a video available about um, making, uh, if you see at the top here, I have um, I have some buttons for, for doing some uh, preset changes. So I have one here actually going to change building because yes to building because apartments because I was cleaning up some um, mapping around where I am. So that is, uh, you can get a one click way to uh, change the tags. So that is another way to uh, to kind of, like if you have, like I have a few here, like house, farm auxiliary as well. So if you don't want to have the one the one thing for everything, uh, you could just add um, everything untagged and then you can go like control F and type input way because you knew and it's untagged and I get these two and then I could go control A and I can go, you know, I could add my, my, my particular thing. So um, another way to do it is to, uh, you know, have no tags on the ways and just add the things you want and then, and in a batch, uh, and, and then after you've done a, a batch to uh, to do the find and then add the tag. That's um, another solution to that problem. And again, allows you to, for each batch, to um, do a different, a different thing. Like if you're, you know, if there's a, a, a town and you have, um, if you have a town over there and you have, uh, um, you know, some of the houses and then there's a farm area over there and you know, in one go. Um, okay, uh, so that is uh, but how to do curve buildings, but then also uh, uh, digressing on other more advanced building things. Um, but, I mean, that does kind of slightly bring us to the other uh, thing that um, to talk about, namely terraces, which is, which is kind of similar. So some of this stuff, well... Mm. Terraces on like curve buildings are, are quite straight, <laughs> obviously. Um, and I mean, this is partially like semi-detached houses. Here we have, I mean, these aren't, I think these are not really terraces, but they're, they're, they're more than semi-detached. Um, there are several ways to easily, you could call that this, this a terrace, I suppose. Um, there are several ways in JOSM to, to map these. Uh, let's, let's try. Bit dark. Anyway, let's go do these. Okay. I don't like that the sun <laughs> has made them all. Uh... Now, yeah. So let's do this. Um, the one simple way to build tools plugin is you could just go along, and what I sometimes do is I will get. Uh, you can draw the outline of all of them, select it, and which can also be Control Shift uh, Control. Shift Z will select the last created way, so you don't have to move your hand far. There is a Terracer plugin for Jossum. Yeah. Uh, Terracer. I have that turned on. There's the plugin. Turn it on. And that is in Tools. Tools, Terracer building, or you can press Shift T. So select the way. Shift T. Um, and it is useful as well for adding house numbers like to each one if you know that one end is number one and the other is number two and um, either it goes like one two three four five six seven eight nine ten or if it's like uh, number two number four number six number eight it's the even odd uh, and so you could go like two uh, two and eight or whatever but um, I never use the addressing feature that because I don't know the addresses um, segments are the main one you which is basically how many houses there are so here there are one two three four five six this is using the backyards um, and, and, but another trick, uh, Kieran told me is to count the chimneys. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six. These are the white things on the roof. Um, 
But I, I mean, I, I would mostly use back gardens or driveways um, as a way to count me there. So if I was to do six, uh, and this would have building, this would do this, yes, but you know, if I wanted to do, say, maybe house, I don't know, whatever. Um, it would it would split that into six equally sized uh, buildings. And then um, I would, I've done the roof, so I need to align these with the floor pan, which is pretty good here. And you can look at how, for example, here and then the, uh, um, the wall, because um, that would be where the house border is, boundaries. Um, that's quite, the terrace plugin is handy because it, um, they're all equally sized. Um, and, you know, if here you have six, and, you know, if you had like 20, it would be much quicker to do. Um, it, it, in my opinion, has some flaws, like if you have um, slightly irregularly shaped buildings. Um, and like if someone has built an extension or something like that. Um, and you don't like if, if you were to try to do these with the um, um, the terrace or plugin, we first need to count them one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm not afraid of getting things wrong. Um, like you, you, you can't let's pretend these are all six in each one, and you, you can't, you can't really. I don't know how the terrace or plugin would handle this, it, it tends to get a bit um, silly when you um, uh, when you uh. When you have like non square shapes. <laughs> um, let's try to terrace this into, let's say, let's pretend there's 18. Yeah, <laughs> so what the hell is that, you know? Uh, whatever algorithm they use just, just falls apart. And uh, I, like, what the, what the heck is this thing? Uh, I, th I think our last building has gone really big and it's, I don't know, whatever. Yeah, so it doesn't, it doesn't and it's got a, a, a parallelogram building there. So um, the terrace or plugin sometimes can fall apart. Um, the one I like to do is uh, I would often just draw, but you can actually, by the way, you can just draw along the, the central roof and go to the left. And then, you now this is in the shade, so it doesn't help very much, but uh, you can go to the side and extrude it over. I like to get that, drag one to the end, uh, and then I have my building, and then hold Alt uh, in the extrude mode, and uh, drag along the size of each house. Uh, now, Let's extrude that up and drag that out because I'm offset a bit and it also allows you to go like this and you don't need to count the numbers uh, and extrude and drag to the right um, so you can just kind of work along um, the downside is as you might notice they're not all the same size uh, which is almost certainly incorrect so uh, I, 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 uh, intersect, 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 select, select, selecting, select, intersecting objects with I. So that's how I just did that. So I just detail that. Um, I also find the, this, this approach though can be useful for, you can see it here where there's a, there's a bit sticking out. Like if I wanted to do the, um, what I'd really like to do here is, uh, Double click to create a node at a certain point and extrude outwards. If I was to try to extrude and um, terrace this into, that looks like three. Yeah, you see, it doesn't work. <laughs> what the hell? Um, um, what I can do is, uh, let's select uh, three. So I can go here, uh, Alt, drag out a new one, select this here, create a point there, uh, regular extrude. Extrude out a new one, double click and extrude out a lot, and then I get a house that is um I, I get the, the three of them as you can see there, and I have like this lines up here against that. Um, so that that's that's um so the terrace plugin and that uh, it's it's flaws and weaknesses and strengths. Um, that's using the extrude option for um, um you know auto and moving along. Um, there is also in Jasm a way to cut a object that is uh, let's say we draw this and we extrude out here for more complicated shapes um right i create a point well just click so a create a point um a again to get my align mode as you can see here and i it's not doing against anything like i said you shift uh, ho hover your mouse over a way and press shift and it's done that, and I can go 90 degrees, and I double click, and I create a point. I, I create double click will um, 
where you're drawing away will end the current way. So um, I don't have a little bit hanging out here. And I double clicked on the way, so it has added it. That node is, is in this way. And I press Alt X and it cuts the this way, the outer way based on this little inner, inner way I made uh, at that. So I now have two, as you see, objects, two ways that have been, been cut exactly. And so this is the way you can, you can, you could draw the outline of a shape and uh, and then a particular point uh, just cut it across. I did that recently where there was a um, let's draw, there, was, there was basically a supermarket and there was there was now a um, there was a, a now a little um, oops mute you mute out muted um, there was a I needed to cut a, a square bit out and I um, created a point, right click, uh, right hover, no, no, yeah, what the, okay, hang on a minute, ah, oh, align mode, right, and I, I wanted to cut out a, um, a section, and I did all X, and, and then I had, I had this shape and I could, I could change this segment to a, to a new supermarket, um, so that is um, that is another way to do it is to create uh, draw the outline way and um, and then using the align mode and uh, the the cut feature to to then split a the outline way into the appropriate number then of, of different ways uh, because sometimes it can be easier to draw uh, just the, the the outline and uh, as opposed to drawing each one individually. Um, so that's that's the other approach to to doing kind of terraces and more complicated buildings. So uh, that's the end of that segment. Question time. Uh, Kieran says terraces built lately are splayed, i.e., set back from each other and diagonally orientated towards the roadway. Architects believe this provides more privacy. Fair enough. Um, yeah. So uh, you know, it's it's. I I I mean, Kieran would know way more about this, but um, you can often. You know, it's it's fast. One of one of the advantages of this buildings project is is just kind of like exploring the country uh, and and looking at the buildings, and, and you can see yeah different sort of styles evolve, and uh, um, uh, you know you you can kind of guess oh how old something is and and when something was made and all that. Um, I believe there's a talk at Sotom about um, um, yeah, like detecting aerial imagery, and and you need to. It, you need to know, you know. You need to know know the local area, and um, th this can obviously be relevant. Like you know, all of, you know, everyone familiar with Ireland will know that that these are all individual houses. Uh, but if you were to get a, a newer build, um, uh, you know, like these are obviously industrial over here. This is basically like this. This could be a uh, could be an offices. Oh, yeah, here something like this. Um, this this is not like you know. This uh, you can see it's several floors, but like this is obviously some sort of a apartment block, um, and so if you know you would not, um, you know you you would not split that into into you know two, um, that's that's wrong. Uh, we all know that. We can tell from the fact that there's a big parking over here uh, for many spaces, uh, it, uh, and there's um, a bit of green, uh, you know, uh, at the plaza area or whatever at the front here, um, and it, it looks very new, uh, so. I mean, this could be offices as well, but yeah. So it's it's handy to know, to know local area to know what you should and shouldn't do, and to know if you should uh, terrace it or not. Um, you know, obviously, in 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 you know, these these are all individual houses, and inside cities, you know, you're going to get a lot of essentially terraces like these. These are all individual houses. So yeah, um, yeah, use your head. Any other questions? I thought I thought I'd be finished in like fifteen minutes. <laughs> uh, yeah. um, we have comment from uh, Beavis, I think, about uh, about remembering all of these shortcuts. Yeah, that's hard. <laughs> Perhaps, actually, what I could do is um, I could put them into the YouTube um, box as a little um, in the uh, for the description. And I could basically, um, uh, yeah, so have them there as a reminder. And then Brian H says, how to terrace a curved building. 
Yeah, I mean, so you can see my screen. I have I have the thing open and see it as well. Um, as as well as remembering, I have been trying to visually. I mean, a lot of this you do sort of the more common ones you will learn. I remember using the Linux command line one time, and and someone was like, "How do you remember all these commands?" And it's like, oh, it's built burnt into my fingers, uh, muscle memory at this stage, you know. So you get a different keyboard and everything is screwed. Um, this is why I can't use a German keyboard. Uh, the um. So you do sort of learn these a lot. I've been trying to um, explain what I'm doing as I do it. And I have, if you notice the very bottom of the window, I have, I have a little thing that uh, will show you what I click. So uh, hopefully since this is being recorded, you'll be able to uh, scrub through the video and, and, and try to see exactly what I'm doing as I do it. So uh, that, that's instead of, in case everything isn't written down. But, um, Brian asked about terracing a curved building. That is a good question. Um, thankfully, it's relatively rare. Uh, it's kind of helpful that that most of the buildings we do are mo most buildings are you know uh, simple. Let's see if I can find an example to 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 to. Do. Oh hey, here we go. Look at that. Uh, how would I do that? So I don't. So, like I said, most of the um, examples are quite um, most um, um, since most buildings are. Uh, are square like a lot of the, the shortcuts and tools are good for that more complicated m more uncommon things like curved buildings like this are um although it didn't take me long to find that you, you almost have to do it manually basically because it's uncommon there isn't really a good metaphor for doing it and similar to remembering key combinations you probably wouldn't be able to remember how to do it anyway or at least i would forget so let, let's draw this one how would i do let me think how would i do that let me do that and then you really need. Uh, I think there is something in the extrude tool about. Nope. Nope. Is he supposed to make a new. You know, I'd, I'd probably just, you know, align this up <laughs> like this. Um, although you really want this to be here because this is not a 90 degree angle. Hmm, well, hang on, let's firstly. Ah, you know what you can do. You know what you can do. Let's make let's make a curve. Make a curve. A curve. And let's make a right angle here. And then let's make a curve. Oops. And we'll make a right angle. Oops. I should. Ah, you know what I should have done. You know what I should have done. I should have turned this on, so I know when I'm ninety degrees. Ah, there we go. Mm. That's not right. Mm, so I'm 90 degrees off from this, but I let's see X, drag this down along this way, press around the edge for here, and improve way accuracy. I'll put this in where I think the middle is probably here. And let's see, if I press controls whoop, no. Um so the the um control Z to undo by the way. Uh if I select this node and this node with shift and I select the menu uh, and I press curve, it will curve those three and also create a new node, okay. I don't want that. Oh, I didn't wish to make a new. All right, so I need to split this. <laughs> so how how would I do it? Uh, with, with a lot of problem error, is it? So P to cut the ways, and we will do this bit, and then we'll select and select, and shift and C to combine, and reverse and combine, yeah. Now we have, oh, that doesn't look right, isn't it? That's too far in. Anyway, let's, let's go with that for a moment. Um, how would I do this? I would probably, yeah, select this, and then I would go to what looks like you can kind of see it's slightly darker here and you you can kind of see that there's you know it's it's not a perfect curve but a series of right uh, of straight lines angled off each other so i'll just kind of you know use your head and go in here and then split and you click alt x create a new one and i say that goes there's one two three four here so i go uh, one and then i would just try to Feel it out. So we'll click X, Control X, A, make a new one. Add, and then you don't need that. Align. Yeah, that's correct. Um, hold X. So that that is how I would do that. I, I, I'm not terribly happy. This is too bold. And ooh, apparently. So uh, that's how I would do it. So basically, manually with a bit of trial and error <laughs> is essentially my answer to that. Um, Let's see, I would have used the YouTube plugin to get the curve and then Alt X. Hmm. Oh, interesting point. Yeah, so if we if we make this, make a curve, 
and then if I extrude this, ha <laughs> ha no. <laughs> uh, oh, what I could do, I could make a line here, and then I could maybe extrude. Whoops, no. <laughs> Uh, nope. <laughs> hmm. I just did. And then let me just pull this in here. Oh, look at the snap line there. Okay. Um, what you can do apparently is you can make parallel ways somehow. Yeah, so basically your question is, if I wanted to do this, I would have to think for a few minutes and fiddle around. I don't know off the top of my head. Um, someone has a left keyboard. Draw the rectangle manually edit. Yeah, yeah, here on that's route as well. Um, you can make the curves and split them like the supermark. Yeah. Yeah, that which is kind of what I did the first time. Um, there is there is a um, there is a, a, a make parallel ways. I think, but I'm I'm not sure how that works. I'm not sure where that is. Uh, like, oh god, Jocelyn's UI is a bit all over the gaff. Uh, so like, where is it? A day, you know, tools and more tools and stuff. Why the hell is that different? Um, anyway, yeah. So I don't. Oh yeah, sorry. The other thing that can happen with the Terraser plugin, which you probably will experience some point, is if you have something that's, um, let's say it's, it's relatively long and uh, it's two long houses, and you really want the line to go from here to here, and if you terrace that, it will it will take the shortest way. So you're like, you know, I wanted to go like this way from, um, you know, I I really wanted to go sort of from here to here, uh, but it's just that. So that's that's annoying with the Terraser plugin. So I I don't tend to use the Terraser plugin. Okay. Um, so yeah, curved terraces manually is my answer. So, like, yeah, manually with the curve plugin and, and, and spilling. Any other questions? That seems to be yes. Um, I, uh, so if there is nothing else that people want to ask about or mention or suggest or theorize, um, then uh, thank you very much, Rory, for giving us that very insightful talk on advanced ways to map buildings. Um, can I just say one thing I forgot? Um... Yeah, so A, uh, the OSMF is having board action soon. If you remember, vote, join the flame war. Um, yeah, you were talking about some more advanced building stuff. Um, I, I, I am just going mad for street complete. I'm sorry. I, a street complete is just fantastic. I, I, I love it. Uh, if you have an Android phone, seriously, check out street complete. It, it keeps getting better and they've added a new thing. It's just way faster now. And, you know, I, I thought Germany was pretty well mapped. And then I opened up street complete and it was just like, oof. Um, there's a few bits in there for building related stuff, so obviously building levels, um, but also changing things that are building equals yes. Um, and in this lockdown time, uh, I know you guys only have a limited uh, distance that you can go, but uh, like if you live in a city, it's just, you know, if you want to get out, just, just fire up street complete and just be like, there'll be a, it might be an area where there's like one of the buildings here or one of the building levels and just, just go for a walk. Um, and, and just tap away on your phone. And I find I, I can map like 10 times faster for things like that, you know? Um, it's And you can disable, enable or disable certain things. So you could disable everything except for like, you know, the building type and the building, you know, levels or roof shape or whatever. So if you really want to focus on buildings, um, yeah, street complete, you know, just get out of the house, get a bit of fresh air. Um, uh, so, you know, you, you, you can sit at home and, and, and do the aerial imagery and then just go for a walk and, and, and uh, get the next level of detail um to also so uh, yeah street complete android phone go for it fantastic that is a great tip because like the final thing that we should be able to aim for is for people to get directions to to places um with those maps uh because that kind of final level of, because that final mile our problem is 
then I thought the two folks who are not really involved in OSM, um, they will, they always want but to know, can I get to Turk's place with this map? And so having that level of, of user um, engagement and, um, and, and relevance will help it become more of a used resource. And, and you, I mean, you can just do all the extra stuff like footpaths, cycling routes. There's several about um, our uh, pedestrian crossings and, and streetlights, like accessible to people blind, people with, with yeah, um, or um, uh, disabilities. And, you know, is there, does steps have uh, ramps for wheelchairs and stuff like that? You know, which is, which, you know, Facebook has shown and, and Microsoft that they can just do an AI generated computer vision thing of the planet and get roads and buildings. Okay, you've got the buildings, but... You know, if you're, a, and even now, OpenStreetMap is currently, um, you know, if you're in a car or general POI stuff, yeah, OSM is not the best or addresses, but anything that does outdoor stuff, um, you know, cycling, outdoor cycling, or, or like I saw one for, you know, people doing canoe paddling, um, OSM is currently the best in that regard, hiking, you know, the, every, every app that uses it, you can see almost certainly uses OSM data. Um, and we, we can be, this is the advantage, you know, Microsoft, Facebook, etc., can can auto generate buildings and roads, but you know there's so much more that 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 we as a community can do for for so many of us, and that's a street complete can also do that. Um, and OSM in general, you know, that's something we can do.